Got a beautiful cold day. Storm rolled through yesterday, gave us about three inches of snow. And now we're just in the very chilly air. Fog on the valley floor, just kind of out there. You know, I'm, I'm up on the hillside, so I'm not on the valley floor where it stays very cold and very foggy. But the trail is just blazing us like nuts today. Some very persistent ones. And now we've got uh, these two puppies coming overhead. And so they're, they're doing something. Alaska Air. Who's this guy? Difficult because I'm overexposed on the sides. Nevertheless, old trail, fresh trail, fresh trail. There's the cross. You can see there are two different types. Kind of making some geometry up here as we're trying to sculpt the jet stream into its next desired shape. And the jet stream's compressed. It has to come over these mountains. They're 14,000 foot or so. And so we're compressing the jet stream into a two mile smaller space vertically. And there's also some other things that happen over these mountains that are uh, mystical. Uh, looks like we got a lenticular starting to form. You can see the ice crystals in the sky. The plane coming in. It kind of looks like it's uh, American paint up scheme because they did fly a lot of these planes. And so this one is going to impact our vertical trail here. But where is it going to strike? Looks like it's going to be about this bend where it's a straight trail here. And you can see right here is about where it bends. Clip the end of that trail. Here's an interesting flight. This is supposed to be a Southwest 737. It's going to be a big old fat trail, passing through a bit of a gap, but then it stays brightly illuminated here. But what I'm interested in is this bend that happens right there. And at the end of that bend, at the end of this push this way, or this is coming this way, the trail ceases to illuminate. You still see the wingtip vortexes, those and then still some powders above them, but they're very, very faint. And boom, at that point, what happens? And this is my contention for the chemtrails, is that they're out there to, to mark this zone. And it stays brightly illuminated because something in the trail, the trail's chemistry is reacting with the energy or the environment that is only right here. Here's another trail, headed off to the southwest. Let's follow it back. Powder's kind of coming out the bottom, aerosol's out the bottom. And then the trail comes to a pinched end. At the beginning of this cirrus kind of cloud, it's not really a cirrus, but anyway, we have a point and a point. And it went right through essentially the nose that would represent those two eyes. Come back over here. And we can see how the powders, how the shape of the contrail dispersion changes. It drops to the bottom and then drags to the southwest. And then believe it or not, as it heads into a more moist atmosphere of a cloud, it disappears altogether. And that is contrary to how, if these are moisture laden trails with particulates from the jet fuel, then we should see an explosion of cloud growth in the cloud. And it's not. So this trail is up there to make something else visible rather than the vapor quantity of the atmosphere or the potential of the vapor, vapor in the atmosphere to create a cloud. It's doing something else.